tell us in the comment. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Hey everybody, belated happy Easter. It's been a long break, uh, Holy Week. And uh, tonight we have a special topic, Feng Shui of Haunted Houses. As luck may have it, sometimes uh, when you acquire, especially many, inherit a place, but it turns out to be a haunted house or a haunted place. And what bearing does it uh, bring to one's luck in life or fortunes? Let's see as we uh, tackle this to uh, topic tonight with uh, various true to life uh, stories which uh, I actually experienced in my practice uh, these past decades uh, in Feng Shui. Okay, so stand back, relax. Uh, this will be a visual storytelling time and uh, Hope you learn a lot from uh, the other world of what we call uh, the paranormal or uh, from ghost stories and hauntings uh, which exist in real life. Okay, for our first story, uh, let me share with you uh, one uh, horrible experience with the former uh, young congresswoman who whose first foray renting out a condo at the fort near St. Luke's Hospital. Apparently, uh, unknowns to her, that particular condo has been empty uh, in terms of occupancy for a long time and uh, in relation to Feng Shui, uh, such spaces or properties besides hospitals easily get uh, uh, possessed or uh, lived in by uh, what we call hungry ghosts, especially during Chinese Ghost Month. Uh, as you know, a lot of what we call uh, in Feng Shui hungry ghosts thrive in hospitals. Those uh, uh, people who uh, could not accept and move on to the afterlife, their respective deaths, especially in uh, the hospital scenario. No? So this is what happened. This uh, congresswoman friend of mine uh, never believed in Feng Shui. Uh, she's very religious and it was her first uh, uh, major uh, uh, adventure into uh, uh, self-independence uh, having been uh, newly uh, separated she ventured into uh, renting her own condo to start a new uh, her life uh, at BGC. I was surprised uh, she called me one afternoon very frantic at around noon if I can rush to her uh, newly rented place in uh, uh, BGC uh, for Feng Shui. And I said, uh, why? I said, uh, let, let me explain uh, later. So when I turned up at the condo, as we were about to enter the door, uh, she explained that, uh, well, she being alone now, only she and her uh, uh, yaya, her trusted maid, for several years now, will be occupying the place. And apparently, she has paid the uh, uh, down payment 
the usual uh, requirements and started to move in uh, that week. However, a lot of uh, Walter guys phenomenon has been happening each time they were moving in to the extent that uh, at this, that point she couldn't tolerate it anymore as her yaya felt that night she called back and said the owner refused to uh, uh, refund the deposit it being a done deal all the contracts signed so I said, uh, uh, between the money and your peace of mind, it's better to sacrifice the money and uh, let's just look for a better feng shui uh, uh, condo for you. So the next day, we met again to go condo hunting. As, uh, as she requested movers to move her stuff back while she still had the allowance to store it in her previous unit. No? And the uh, nice thing was that afternoon when we went tripping a few blocks down the road, there was a very suitable unit for her no? and said uh, forget whatever you've invested write it off uh, leave this again as a new start and uh, you'll be in a better place this uh, unit will bring you enormous income enough to offset whatever you lost fast and true to form when she engaged that unit Within the next uh, uh, two months, she got uh, recruited to a top executive position uh, and uh, her income almost tripled. So what's the take on this case? Usually, in a ghost-haunted uh, place like this one, a condo, some people are willing to settle for peaceful coexistence. They make offerings, follow the spiritistas. But in Feng Shui, uh, the rule is uh, don't coexist you have always a choice. Uh, The rule in Feng Shui is suffering is always optional. You need not suffer, especially when it comes to these experiences. Uh, You can have a better life, but you must be willing to sacrifice. Like in this case, you had to to sacrifice uh, her heart earned uh, 350,000 deposit, no? but it had many happy returns. Okay, so uh, that's how it is for our first story. Uh, it depends on your attitude whether a ghostly experience can be lucky or not for you. But just remember, the number one moral lesson is uh, suffering is optional in Feng Shui. You always have a choice not to go into suffering situations, like enduring coexisting with a ghost in a unit and be bothered by poltergeist, whatever. Okay? So, as much as possible, avoid haunted uh, places. Okay. Uh, uh, my experience in interacting with spiritistas in some projects 
I learned that ghosts are practically territorial. They protect their turf no? and very possessive. That's why when uh, you enter a ghost-ridden place or haunted place, you feel that eerie feeling, having goosebumps, as if somebody like a dog or another human being uh, beside you, there's a presence. And worse is if you feel as if they're sniffing all around you, they're feeling and groping their way, uh, whether you are uh, uh, friendly or not to them. Okay, so that's how uh, territorial ghosts can be, which will lead me later on to explain to you how uh, in Feng Shui there is a cure for uh, uh, ghost presences like this no? as a mode of protection, uh, like in these times of pandemic, as a mode of uh, vaccination from ghosts or uh, plane protection or deterrent, normally as a deterrent, not prophylaxis, okay? Uh, so we will tackle that uh, later on. Uh. So there is this Cebu Abacha Governor's House Restaurant Project because of a uh, haunted place. Okay. Now let's go up to Baguio. Uh, one son of a tycoon brought me to the lateral house telling me that he was assigned to uh, uh, well make recommendations in the place and he said uh, he'll have it feng shui first and that famous white house along uh, near teacher's camp so-called the uh, uh, haunted house in Baguio, the lateral house. It's maraming pangalan yan. It's also called the uh, Yamashita house or Malacanang of the North uh, during World War II because also during Japanese time, it was the headquarters of uh, General Yamashita no? based in Baguio. Now, uh, it's empty, uh, nice white house, but it's like a, it looks like an Aguinaldo house, uh, colonial. However, I was warned as we were walking up the stairs inside, uh, the caretaker warned me, sir, as we reached the top, it's, uh, you know, it's like a balcony type uh, with a turret, uh, yeah, like Aguinaldo's house. No? Uh, don't uh, no, don't ever run. Never so you're scared. Just ignore what you see. So we were moving up. It's a nice place, antique all over. Uh, and when we reach the top, wow. The walk of wind suddenly turned super, uh, super uh, cold. And again, there was the rattling of uh, cabinet doors, presence of poltergeist, uh, window louvers started uh, swinging with no wind at all, just the cool Baguio air and on an eerie afternoon around 4 p.m. dogs in the neighborhood started howling noticeable to me that each time we stay there I'm always billeted in a special room under the helipad I think it's the third floor no third or fourth floor near the fire exit 
uh, on the side of the building where the fire exit stairs are. And uh, for every floor, there are around uh, several bedrooms. All told, the whole building has 20 uh, seminary type uh, rooms, aside from the executive room of uh, the tycoon on the ground floor. So, since we always go there for vacation and good time, uh, we were always drunk and we go home late in the morning. We just go there to bath and uh, sleep and uh, tour Baguio. You know? uh, but this time when we went there, it was Holy Week. You know? uh, and there was not much activity being, I think, Good Friday. Uh, the city was quiet. Uh, as early as 9 p.m., of course, we were still up and about, sober, and decided to rest early. So I went back to my room. As I was preparing my things and packing, uh, suddenly, I heard a knock on my door calling my name. The voice wasn't familiar. So I opened the door. Nobody was there. And I checked the whole hallway, opening all the bedrooms, thinking that one of our companions downstairs uh, was sleeping in the ground floor, was playing a prank on me. <laughs> Only when I reached the last room at the end of the hallway, nobody was there. And I realized it was a long corridor uh, and my room was at the far end that I suddenly had the eerie feeling, you know, the uh, goosebumps thing again. So I rushed back to the room, closed the door, and when I closed the door, windows were still closed, yet the room was breezy as if the windows were open and it was so cold then i suddenly developed cold sweat and here comes the voice again calling me so i for the second time i opened the door bravely went out and searched the rooms again none and then it occurred to me again that uh, hey this is different so i ran back to the room I went straight to bed went under the blankets and tried to sleep so i was this time uh, i began perspiring because the windows were closed and that hot and I was got, I got dead scared. And when I was uh, hidden under the blanket, uh, here comes that voice again. So I gathered up my strength to confront it. So I stood up, oh wow. As I turned around from the cabinets, there was this green image, just like the mask or something like you see in the movies, uh, in my face calling out my name. Okay. And to my shock, <laughs> I felt like a cartoon character, you know, and, uh, the one that has all my hair spiked up, uh, terrified. I gathered my wits to run. Uh, early morning, breakfast, I accosted my friend. I said, hey, why do you make me sleep in a ghost-ridden place? Pare, huwag ka na may ingay, kaya nga kita sinasama dito eh. You know, my situation. 
nobody in the family already wants to go up here in this mansion. So I'm the only one uh, taking courage, bringing you along to prove to them that uh, ghosts are nothing, no? that you can feng shui it. And besides, if my siblings don't like this place, so I'm the best bet to inherit it. <laughs> oh my God. So, I said, forget it. This is my last visit to this place. I'll never come back again. Okay? It was a very harrowing experience. And even up to now, each time I pass by that house, uh, often I have clients in Baguio and sometimes they live near the place. Uh, just passing by in front of the house, suddenly <laughs> dogs in the neighborhood will start howling even during daytime. You know? So that's how ha- haunted it can get. You know? And uh, of course, scary. Okay. So, what's the moral lesson there? Well, some people, despite haunted place, still want that place. <laughs> they want to inherit it, no? Okay. So, there's no limit to greed. Okay. Not even a ghost can stop a greedy person. Let me share with you experience of a lady uh, uh, client uh, whose ghostly experience was uh, felt through a medium uh, after Feng Shui. So she sought Feng Shui after her mom died in a fire that struck their home okay so one thing to have peace of mind she turned to feng shui unfortunately she fell victim to one of the fake feng shui uh, in the community no so the typical ones who ask you to buy and buy all this stuff put anything, you know, from just may masabi lang na related to Feng Shui. So, from beads, wearing beads, to all the statues, these big figurines that are uh, uh, filling up her house already like a museum. Uh, and what's worse was they had a toddler kid and yet, this uh, fake lady Feng Shui prescribed them to protect them from envious people. And, uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, uh, sibling rivalry uh, in the family because after the mom died, uh, uh, well, the dad uh, uh, kept first the estate. And, uh, of course, uh, siblings took sides, who's in favor of the mom, who's in favor of the uh, dad. So there was no harmony. And a lot of envy and intrigue got thrived within the uh, confines of the family. And guess what the fake Kung Sui prescribed to them was to keep an itak or a bolo, like the one of Andres Bonifacio, right under the bed. I was uh, fuming mad because, you know, you have a three, two, three-year-old toddler walking about, a young boy in your house, in your bedroom. What if the boy finds the knife and starts playing with it? You can imagine how dangerous to life and limb it can be, no? So, uh, 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 
So we just subjected their home to the standard uh, classical feng shui uh, treatment. And one of the best uh, things for harmony and of course progress is to take care of an arowana fish. And right after a windfall of uh, insurance money coming in, enough for them to uh, uh, start life anew right? over uh, getting them from renting to building their own house. Okay? So, such phenomenal uh, experiences can happen no? to anyone uh, bordering on such uh, paranormal uh, synchronicities as we call it or happenstance. Okay. So, Manila. And this was a unique experience. Uh, that time uh, I got exposed to uh, doing feng shui for uh, George T's other siblings, half family, no? the family of Donya Salustiana T, second family. And as they got the hang of feng shui, uh, one of their eldest sisters brought me along to her suki in somewhere in Bustilios near Villa Lobos in Sampalo near National University uh, fronting where the MRT station now is in Legarda area okay, it was still under construction then uh, she brought me to her good friend Suki, a watch repair guy, you know, the one in Tiapo, uh, doing watch repair, small stool uh, by the sidewalk. The store is behind him, a general merchandise store, or selling a uh, load of his supplies, one paper to the students, uh, and of course, variety store. Well, he does his watch repair. And he was on a wheelchair. I thought he was so-called elephant man because his legs, both of his legs were kind of like an elephant's already swell, swollen as if it was infected. Uh, uh, it was a different form of edema. No. He said that we have to be careful because he has actually been all over town. He has went to faith healers and other spiritistas and all have a common uh, decision that he was being pulam or under sorcery. No? And the mastermind was his eldest brother. However, they can do counter sorcery and heal him, but on one condition, his brother will die. The mastermind of the sorcery will die. And he didn't like to do that to his brother. He was a very good uh, younger brother. No? So, he did not agree, he sacrificed himself and suffered all these years with that affliction. So when I related to him, aha, uh -huh. there's only one thing I can recommend to you uh, beyond Feng Shui, after we did the Feng Shui, if your energies are, are receptive due to Feng Shui, then I will ask you to take this kind of lana, but I have to source it pa. If you can wait at least a week, it will be sent to me by LBC. It is from Iligan. I will ask my friend to send me 
uh, I think you will need two bottles of the you know yung lapad the the tanduay bottle one for each leg it's either uh, partly you you massage it on your leg and partly you drink it I was surprised to his response oh that's exactly what I was looking for that so-called lana from Iligan because all the spiritistas were telling me that's the only lana or oil that I can drink if I get my hand on it exactly one bottle each for each leg drink straight up and uh, it can heal me without killing my brother that's how powerful that lana is compared to all other nationwide he told me wow i was uh, surprised by you know the coincidence or serendipity of the situation i related it to my friend readily he sent me to bottles of tanduay uh, uh, corn oil, blessed corn oil uh, lana. And when I delivered it to him in uh, Quiapo, in Sampalo, uh, right there and then, in front of me, he chugged it. Two bottles, he finished it in front of me, uh, straight up. And uh, uh that's it i said good luck goodbye and uh, uh hopefully you get well so that was around uh start of the week monday or tuesday come friday since they were all uh devotees of this uh new latecomer saint uh, saint punk precious uh and i think it was his blessed day on a friday uh george the sister called me Adric, please join me let's go to his place let's celebrate and bringing a priest along let's have a thanksgiving mass i said why mom this time you'll find out Wow, when we reached there, uh, he was standing already. No more sign of swelling in his foot. His foot was back to normal. And what he showed me was four bottles of Coca-Cola, full of pus. Two bottles each came from his leg after he drank it. It was purged of all the impurities. We talked over enough for those uh, those stories. Uh, hopefully, next time let's tackle big projects that are affected also by uh, uh, paranormal. No? We just focus on homes this time. Ah, adjunct to that line. Eh? Uh, there is uh, another very miraculous uh, uh, instance of uh, one things also. There was this uh, Iglesia Ni Cristo uh, guy. He was engineer of EEI. He was in charge of Novotel. And his uh, wife engaged me because normally when he has a project uh, one of the perks given to him is uh, his wife can operate the canteen of the construction site so it was here in Cubao no hotel and when I asked why are you engaging Kung Sui uh, I said for our canteen and also the project because the project has already been delayed for three months. I said, ah, no hotel, EEI, 
you have all the resources, you have all the funds, no reason for delay. And she mentioned suddenly the unique cause of delay. Of course, people, the construction workers, have to be fed 24-7. Work is scheduled 24-7, three shifts. And what's important is the food, the canteen. No? You have to feed them 24-7 also. Uh, every shift. Okay. However, the canteen cannot operate because the cooks, all the lady staff, always resign. And even the project got saddled because even the uh, lady security guards assigned to the project uh, for security also resigned. It turned out there was a ghost hunting the place and it was what you call uh, an incubus. It was, uh, you know, an evil ghost that rapes women and things normalize and the project uh, was finished. Okay, so that's one tip, no? Taking care of turtle has actually one extra benefit as protection from other guys like this or uh, no. Why? The simple logic that turtles have their own house and these entities paranormal are territorial. They divert their attention Turtles divert their attention from the human beings in the site to the turtle. Kasi malikot yung turtle. However, much as the entities will focus on the turtle because it's always moving, when they touch it, the turtle hides in its shell. So, magiging busy lang yung ghost and paranormal entities dun sa turtle their attention will not be fixed on the human beings so it allows smooth activities for the humans at the project site okay very simple logic but it works okay and turtle the other benefit it gives full employment full productivity for careers and that's what happened to the EEI workers at Novotel. No? They got fully employed, even the canteen staff, and their careers went uh, busting through. After they returned, the wife called me, crying, asking for help. That why my husband is dying. He's in the ICU. Doctors cannot find anything wrong with him, but he's dying. Okay. Oh, I said, where did you go? And then they said, Sagada. Oh my God. Namatanda. You know, became a victim of uh, folklore, sorcery, or what. Uh, I base it on the fact that he was a firm Iglesia believer. And when I asked if they went on this coffin tour in Tagada, yes, and I understand when you do these tours, there should be always a tourist guide familiar with the rituals of the place. And you have to say, excuse me, or certain rituals, tabi tabi po, when you pass these uh, uh, areas. However, being Iglesia, Kino contra, no? So, may mga anti-evil prayers din ng iglesia or orasyon. So, for most likely, uh, the husband was uh, praying against, no? And it could have uh, caught the ire of, you know, the evil, evil or uh, bad spirits there, no? Ginantihan siya. So, I said, since I was traveling heavily there, I uh, 
patch her up with my friend from Iligan. Requested my friend to please uh, give her also uh, a bottle of uh, uh, Lana. And it's a good thing my friend was traveling to Manila the next day and they were able to meet and he brought her one. And here's the surprise thing. Uh, uh, the husband readily drank in the ICU without the knowledge of the doctor. He drank the Lana based on instruction. And thereafter, he asked for the bedpan. He wanted to uh, go, no? the CR. And when he was uh, using the bedpan, the wife was surprised. He heard a large thud as if a rock fell down into the bedpan. And true to form, when they checked, what came out of his stomach was a big pebble, white pebble, yung buhay na ba to? Uh, straight out of his stomach. No? And there was still another dose, the strike vaccine, June the next day. But, you know, thereafter, the husband felt normal, felt good as if nothing happened, dressed up and checked out. Because tomorrow was one day, it was supposed to be his first day of job. He, he apparently, that, that's why they went to Sagada to celebrate his job transfer from EEI to uh, Invest. No? He was going to be head of the, all the condominium real estate construction, just like Novotel. Okay, so imagine, had he died, during that weekend, uh, poor family, no? breadwinner died. Okay, now new lease on life, new job, new career. Well, of course, nakita niya sa example natin. One of the greatest benefits of life is it distracts paranormal. Kasi galaw sila ng galaw. Maasar sa kanila yung mga mumu. So, sila pag-iinitan, hindi yung mga tao sa bahay. Okay, figurin, wala. So, I hope this that uh, first post-Easter episode uh, satisfied your curiosities about uh, certain topics that are related to Feng Shui, like in this case, haunted houses. No? Stay tuned for the next episode, only here on Big Media.